So um, I want to thank both of you for joining us for this festival and such an incredible film, such an incredibly moving film that um, you know when you get material like this, uh, your two actresses have done so so much and have such varied careers, working all over the stage and in television, film. That when you get material like this, you know, um, I imagine it's quite special. And uh, I always think of these actresses that. You're in a film; it's worthwhile, right? I say so. And uh, so, this is one of those things that you know. What did you think when you first read the script? You know, had you read the book? Um, did you have any familiarity with the material? Uh, I had read the the book um, many years ago. I think when it first came out, uh, probably ten years ago. Um, um, and then when Sarah uh, approached me, we we zoomed together and. Went over the script. I I was um, all right, this, all right, I just thought she did an incredible job. Am I hearing voices? I think the screenplay was so powerful. I I wondered how Sarah was going to film it um, because it seemed like such a piece of theater to me. And many people have said to us it could be a piece of theater, <laughs> but. Yeah, no, I, it was just so dense, and we just investigated it all for the whole three months. We just kept going back to the script, and those, those kinds of words don't come along very often. And uh, I know Sheila won't feel offended by this. When you're our age, um, <laughs> there aren't a lot of roles um, for us, or there's only one. <laughs> And the fact that there are actually three older women in this story was magical, uh, along with three of just about every generation. And um, uh, that excited me to, to be in a room with that much female energy telling this story in, in, with generation, generational points of view that differed uh, because of their generational change and, and distance. Um, but I thought it was a, a story I'd never seen before, and uh, the story is always important. So to think you're telling a story that nobody's ever seen before is what I look for. Um, and speaking of sort of you know this cast, this is an incredible cast and uh, it's an incredible ensemble piece. And what's so wonderful is that each person has a moment to shine. Right, um, and so watching the film, you know, I got to, I was lucky enough to watch this earlier this year and you know, to bring it to this festival. And I was so taken by that, that you each have, you know, a, a, a powerful presence in the film. So um, I wanted to sort of ask both of you, how do you get into, you know, the characters that are so far removed from, you know, the experience that you have? I imagine as as actresses that you you know that you've had just as people, um, how do you get into sort of this world? And what goes into that? Um, uh, well, I think Sarah Pauly is an extraordinary director. We had two weeks of rehearsal, one on Zoom, and then one um, in the hayloft, um, masked up, where we put the choreography together, and she. Having written the screenplay, as, as I said, she, she, you know, we worked a lot on the, on the scenes and a lot on the words, and they, not very much changed. Um, and uh, I, I come, I, I lived in Stratford, Ontario, for many years, surrounded by a, a Mennonite community, and I had a Mennonite nanny and a Mennonite masseuse um, that I, I used to go see all the time, and, and so I kind of knew the world of. Uh, especially of the women, although my nanny did quit in the middle of the night because I swam in the pool with no clothes on. But, um, <laughs> and I did go to get a massage once from Roseanne, and she said, I'm sorry, I can't give you your, your massage today. And I said, why? She said, I'm in labor. And I said, well, please, Roseanne, please go have your baby. She said, no, no, I won't be long. And I was like, what? So I'm, I'm being facetious, but I, I, I was, I know the world, and um, I, uh, you know, in terms of our characters, getting to play Greta was so interesting for me because 
We worked with this designer, Keita Alfred, who designed our look and our clothes, and she was just completely authentic. And uh, coming from a musical theater background, that's where I like to start, just with the shoes and the white socks and the polyester dresses. That was a good place for me to start. Well, that's exactly what I was gonna say. The costume was remarkable in the transformation and you could never see it. And I think of all the hours I spent having my hair braided. And then we put that black scarf on and you wouldn't have a clue how many braids are up there. But the, it worked. It, it transformed you and it, it informed you. So that um, once the, the whole, thank you. Um, once the, the, the outfit was complete, um, it was very hard to look in the mirror and trot off to the studio um, and feel good about yourself. <laughs> Except they were very comfortable. That's true, they were super very comfortable. I, I went to a Starbucks across the street where we were shooting and, and the barista said, like, I thought, oh, she's gonna say something about how I love you. She went, cool dress. <laughs> <laughs> You're very on trend. <laughs> Wear them to the Oscars. Judy's got an idea. So before we sort of open it up to everyone, and I, you know, this is a discussion for all. So if you have a comment you just want to share about, you know, loving the film, the performances, feel free. No pressure to come up with the best question, but don't come up with terrible ones. Uh, but I, it is a discussion, and I want you all to feel welcome to contribute. But before that, I wanted to sort of say, you know, um, as sort of the, the film is being released, this is post Me Too, and sort of this, you know, this speaks to sort of the significance of that, and um, to sort of get your thoughts on um, the reception the film had and the impact that it has had thus far with audiences? Well, uh, when we were in Toronto is where we started working with um, uh, the university classes, is that where yeah. they uh, set up special get-togethers like this with a smaller group, and they were from gender studies, I think, and um, so it was to talk about, obviously, the content of the movie, and, uh, with a, a professor, and um, it was pretty remarkable, the stories that people shared with us and how the movie spoke to them. Um, I, I know that, for, sort of back to your first question, when you um, read a story about this closed, cloistered community, you think that the problems that you will witness and uh, experience don't have anything to do with you. and. Um, it was uh, excruciating a couple of times with the women who shared, who had just left a community not unlike this a clo cloistered community. Um, I think it was an Orthodox Jewish community, community that she spoke, and, and all of us were in tears again. So it's the magic of film um, in the most serious way. Also, also when we were in Telluride, uh, at the film festival, that was where people came up to us for the very first time. And you know, when we were making the movie, like I knew it was an important film, but you can never really know the impact that something's gonna have when you're inside it. You know, we're just taking care of our little puzzle pieces, pieces as actors, and you know, that's enough worry right there. Um, <laughs> but the impact that the film had, like the families coming up to us until you ride. Um, husbands and wives coming up, and the husband's starting to talk, and the woman going, no, 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 you're, you just be quiet. And, her, and then she's talking, and families coming up and saying, we, we've talked about your movie all through dinner, and we've, we've got opposing viewpoints, but it's, it's sort of opened a Pandora's box of thought, and, and uh, it, it, that was really um, why you do it. You know, it was just incredible to hear that. We're still hearing that, which is really very moving. Film comes out soon, so you'll certainly hear more of that. And um, I want to open it at this point to the audience. So, if anyone would like to ask a question, yes, I, I enjoyed the close-ups and the fact that the camera lingered so long on you, and it was very emotional because it was, you just had to stay with me because the camera wasn't moving. I wanted to move, but the camera wasn't moving. Sure. 
lot of thoughts around it. It yeah. wasn't passing me, but what was your way to show hope? We that? talked a lot about hope when we were um, working on the film. And, you know, when, when August opens that barn door at the end, and you see those wagons and the music go, like, that is so impactful. And to me, that just sings out hope. And I, if there's one message I think the movie has is, is, to, is to tell people who are alone to share their story. Because as soon as you tell another human being, it changes your life. And it doesn't, you know, not always completely, but um, I love the idea of hope. That would be my take. Mine was forgiveness. I thought that was an extraordinary um, topic that wasn't just about forgive them and stay here and go on. Uh, I love what um, Ona says, that maybe when we get some distance, we will be able to forgive them, and it won't be forced. And that always resonated for me through the whole thing. Um, it's hard, really hard to forgive. And, Great message. My thought about through the whole thing is the bond between all of the community, even when they disagree and shout at each other or whatever, but there's still one thing we call that a real strong bond between all of them to figure it out. And you know, I think that the sorry, that the that um, we're saying these things to each other for the very first time, too. I don't think these women have spoken like this before. In 2008, I believe, uh, 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 Old Order Mennonite Colony in Bolivia uh, is where the story takes took place. Um, they nine men were arrested, uh, and they the elders of the colony were just going to put them in prisons, um, wooden shack, and leave them there. The Bolivian police got wind of this. Um, arrested nine men, tried them. The women were not allowed to testify, and they are still in prison in Bolivia. But there has been some information coming out that they arrested the wrong people and that it is still ongoing. So Miriam Taves, the novelist, took that true story and wrote her act of female imagination in a book called Women Talk. Uh, what was the most rewarding part of filming it, and what was the most challenging part of the filming process for each of y'all? Well, this was one of those great, extraordinary acting experiences. Um, there were, um, what, nine to 11 of us in all those scenes, as you just witnessed, and to do coverage and move around and get everybody's POV uh, for that scene. Many times it took uh, up to 100 takes. Oh, wow. And um, never once, I think, I can't recall it. Um, uh, maybe it was me that faltered, but nobody faltered. <laughs> and we're there for everybody, even when you were off camera for 90% of that, because you'd already done you'd already been covered. Um, it was extraordinary. And I, it makes me see the tears right now, just <laughs> reliving it. The, the generosity of, of all of us with each other and protecting each other that you didn't want to not give your 100% that you know you did in your take mm -hmm. so that the person on camera would get the same impact. And day after day after day after day, it was very, very moving, um, just as a, an, a, an old actor like me who's <laughs> put up with actors who weren't there for you when it was your turn. And it was magical, it was mystical for, for us. And everyone, I know everyone felt that way. It really was beautiful. Um, well, I'm grateful for Sarah Pauly uh, giving me the opportunity to play the part. Um, I guess the most, cha I would concur with the, the, the challenges of that. Um, one of 
when the movie, when I first met all these people, I was such a fangirl, and for me, the idea that the queen would be washing my feet, that was just, what? It just happened to me. And so it took me, that was a big challenge for me to stop being fangirl, and it was you know, daunting to be working with you know, Judy and, and Claire and Jesse and Rudy. Like, you know, these are people I've been watching for years. So it took me, I don't think I ever got over it. <laughs> Just to find my own relaxation as an actor. I felt like I was at the Olympics every day. And, oh, wow. You know, I had to bring my A game. And the bar was really high. And I think that was from Sarah Pauly. Mm -hmm. Without saying anything, it was just she set, you know, a certain standard and expectation for us all that, that I think everybody felt that. It, Absolutely. You know, yeah. And Sarah, um, <coughs> creates such an extraordinarily, uh, people use this a lot, and I've always kind of hurled my whip at it, but I finally learned what it was, understood it, and respected it, um, the, a safe place for everyone. So she respected so much of um, what you wanted to do, you could make suggestions. It didn't mean she used it, but um, it was uh, a true collaboration. I, I became a fangirl of her, and I would, uh, rather than go back down to our dressing room area, I would hang out and not leave the loft while she was setting up other shots. <laughs> I thought that's why, I thought that was because you didn't want to climb that ladder every well, time. <laughs> well, no, you just blew it for me. <laughs> Y'all, y'all were remarkable and meshed in very well with all of the other wonderful ladies. So. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you see all of that sort of camaraderie and that closeness and that love um, in the screen, just every shot with everyone. Um, in terms of contributions, right, and your characters and getting into the roles, <coughs> what did you contribute that was sort of kept in? I, I just don't want to say something about the camaraderie. Sarah uh, asked a group of Mennonite women and they, they were also the first people to see the film, what they wanted to see on the screen when a group of, you know, 11 of us are in a, in a hero. And they said laughter and physical. This, you know, when the men are not around, um, the women communicate differently, there is more laughter, and you'll notice in the movie there's a lot of touching, and that, and that was done very deliberately, and they, they liked that. Um, well, I'll just tell a very short story. I had an, I had an idea, and I often don't um, speak up, but after the scene, my uh, post-rape scene, when I'm sitting on the bed with my teeth, I said to Sarah the next day, I said, oh, I should have made my bed, because that's something Greta would do. And Sarah just went, oh, why didn't we do that? And then two months later, um, on the very last day of shooting, uh, we were the only, Sarah and I were the last ones there on set. And she came up to me, she said, do you want to make your bed? And the production designer put together uh, my bedroom and we reshot the whole scene. And Sarah said to the crew, uh, we're doing this because this, um, this is Sheila's idea. And uh, believe me, there's not a lot of directors that give actors credit. <laughs> that, you know, but she certainly did. And we did the scene. and. In the movie. <laughs> so that was, um, I learned a lesson about uh, being brave enough to contribute. Yeah, but she provided, as Judy said, that environment. Um, and then we had a question over here. our little green room seeing the tail end of the movie and we both turned to each other when um, I was telling her please leave and go join the others that was going to be our last day of shooting together and um, that it, it didn't require any acting <laughs> it was um, both of us had a hard time 
getting through it. Um, but it's it's hard to absolutely pick one. That one was um, where I'm not a very good crier, so I was greatly relieved that um, I had fallen in love with Sheila, so <laughs> I didn't want to leave her. In the book, August is the narrator of the book, and he and so Ben Wishaw was also just sidebar to that um, was going to narrate the film, and then last Christmas, well, uh, while Sarah was editing, she had this idea that it really had to be a female voice narrating the film, and I think that was a stroke of genius. Um, I. You know, Ben is, because the women are illiterate, um, can't read and can't write, um, it pointed up that yes, it had to be a man who would take down, you know, who would take down our diary and keep track of what we were saying for posterity. Um, and he was such a gentle soul, like it was just like having um, one of us in the room, really. That's how I felt about Ben, about August. He was just one of us. He was, he's an extraordinary actor, and as I was talking about coverage, most of the women got their coverage first, for some reason, we, we noticed that, and then finally Ben, at the end of the scene, would get his coverage, and he had sat through all of that, and it, he would end up doing far fewer takes, and each one was brilliant. It was a, a master class to watch him, you know, come up with whatever he came up with. It's a wonderful actor. Any questions for you? Uh, Y'all were awesome, first of all. Uh, love you not to Holly Esther. Um, you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> My question was also about August. Um, why do you think, this might be a question for Sarah, but why do you think he couldn't go with the women? Do you think that was to maybe provide hope for the future generations of men, or? I, I think you answered it, I think it was because he's been, he has been, uh, he's a testament to what has just happened in the loft for 48 hours. So he kind of has to stay behind to continue that learning, you know, to continue. And I mean, in my, in my little heart, I think, oh, he will join us, you know. He will, <laughs> he, he will come. Well, he has a big job. He's, he's now going to be the one to change the next generation and influence the next generation of men, which he's sort of charged with there at the end. And we have a question. for two weeks and then it was about two and a half months, three months. Yeah, uh, five June, days a week. It was like June 10th to September 10th, yeah. So. And, and we shot it almost in order, I think, they, at least the Hayloft scenes. Right. Yeah. Oh, God. And as to the forgiveness line, I believe that's not in the book, right? That is something that was contributed later. Like Sarah that. heard somebody say that and then thought that would be so pertinent to put in the screenplay. And that sort of speaks to, to me, that speaks to sort of your uh, idea of the film and you know, sort of your takeaway of the story, which is forgiveness. Um, well, as you say, who, who, are, who am I really in real life? I'm so low. I would be the one that would get the axe and the <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 I
I would love to be a Gotha. I wish that was who I really was, but I'm not. And um, so it was a, a great lesson for me as Judy to find that place. <laughs> And um, sort of speaking to that as like your takeaways with your character, you know, as actresses who have had such, again, wide and varied careers, and you guys have done so much, what do you take from, you know, a film like this um, sort of moving ahead? And what do you take sort of from each character that you play? A loaded question. <laughs> That's why um, I saved it to the end. Yeah. No, no, they, they don't all resonate like this. They, they, this kind of project doesn't come along a lot. Um, you know, when you do a Hallmark, you don't think about it when you're finished. <laughs> Sorry for people who love, I mean, they're great. They're great, my husband loves them. <laughs> I just hope he's watching them ironically. I'm not going to do that. Imagine this movie done as a Hallmark. <laughs> um, I take away. I'm really proud that I got that we got to do this movie. Like I'm just over the moon. Like just as as an actor, like I feel like the luckiest person in the world. Um, and you know, I mean, we it took us a while to get into the movie. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, Sheila used to say to me, because we would comment on how we had to work, and she'd say, when we go to the festivals, we're going to wear sparkly dresses and lots of makeup. <laughs> uh, I, I, the, the one thing for me in this particular movie is uh, the fact that not only was this extraordinary group of women um, in front of the camera, there was an extraordinary group of women behind the camera. And uh, there were extraordinary men as well, not to be excluded, but to be, to watch the world change in our profession right before your eyes in terms of uh, consideration, respect, power, um, was uh, amazing. And uh, I know I keep dwelling on my age, but at my age, um, I had not experienced that a lot, and um, I'm so glad I got to. Um, my mother is 100 years old, and she um, was so disappointed when Hillary wasn't elected, because she thought she was gonna get to see a woman be the President of the United States, and I guess it's kinda not likely that she will. <laughs> Oh, she might live forever, but um, <laughs> it, 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 I may not have an opportunity like this again, because the world hasn't completely changed. So I, I think it's very moving, as I would say, we, uh, the young girls in it, was that you're gonna have it, as said at the end of the movie, your world is gonna be different. And the world will possibly be a little different with the conversation struck by this film. So this is, I thank you both for joining us. It's just amazing, amazing film. And for everyone here, I just want you to sort of, you know, spread the word about this film that is coming out soon and let everyone know that they should see women talking. So I thank you for joining us for this screening and we hope that you join us for all of the other offerings here at the festival. And I thank you all for staying. Thank you.